Show your belly, soft paw. The Verl's roar echoed through the promenade. Minnell's translator helpfully conveyed the meaning. Show you have learned deference, and I might decide not to teach you fear. Minnell hustled through the crowd, but stopped when he saw his partner moseying forward at a much slower pace. Kelsor had not even bothered to draw her stun whip. Shouldn't we hurry? Minnell asked. That Fruhrl is going to attack. No need, Kelsor burbled. I've been waiting for this. I'm surprised it took so long. Minil's eye stalk swiveled towards a gap in the crowd. He could see the furrel now, a male specimen, large. Its top set of arms were long, heavy with muscle, and spread wide in an intimidation gesture. Its smaller arms were bent in front of it, ready to defend. Its feet and all four of its hands were tipped with curved, wicked claws. Its fangs were bared, and its three eyes glared at a two-armed biped. A human. It was as Minil feared, the Furrell hated humans. They considered them to be prey animals, and the refusal of a prey animal to accept their dominance was an insult they could not forgive. The Furrell Starfang Empire had gone to war over it, and their defeat at the hands of the Terran Federation had only stoked their hatred further. The Vril growled another threat at the human. The human replied, but his voice did not carry far enough for Minil's translator to activate. Both creatures were unarmed, the only weapons allowed on Tenral Station were those used by security. Not that he needs one, Minnell thought. The Vural were apex predators. Minnell's stun whip felt small and ineffectual in his tendrils. Should we not intervene, Kelso? he asked his partner. We've already had two human deaths this week. In both cases, the Vural responsible had fled to their ships before security could reach them. Their claw leaders had been heavily fined for the deaths but that was poor consolation to the families of the victims, nor did it act as a deterrent. The claw leaders had purred their pleasure as they paid. Just watch, rookie, Kelsor's voice rippled with amusement. This is going to be good. The Vorovel leapt for the human, grasping with his large set of arms. His head shot forward, seeking to crush the man's head in his fangs. Instead of screaming and dying, the human swept an arm under the predator's top arm and made an oddly graceful twisting motion with his legs and torso. The furrel was flung to the ground. Both combatants had moved so swiftly Minil barely had time to flinch. The furrel let out a whiff of air. The human took two steps towards it. As the creature regained his feet, the man made another oddly graceful turning motion. His leg flashed out in an arc, coming down and across the predator's face, a yowl of pain. Four sets of claws lashed out. The human parried two aside and twisted around the others, striking with his lower appendage a second time. His foot struck just below the furl's knee, a much louder yowl, and the creature fell. One leg useless, the creature scrabbled on the ground, reaching for the man. The primate skipped back. The vertrol followed. The man's arm shot forward, pulling the attacker's arm straight and to the side. The man struck behind the joint with the bottom of his hand. There was a sickening crunch. As the Furul screamed and spun, Kelsor remarked, Humans are classified as prey animals. They have no claws or stingers or natural weapons. Their strength and speed are in the middle range for their size group. The human snapped another long arm. We all know how deadly an armed human is. But in places where they can't carry weapons, they are considered helpless. The human's foot arced down with graceful force, shattering the shoulder joint of a third arm. The Vurrl have been taking advantage of this to seek revenge for their wounded pride. The Vurrl spun itself, lashing out with its remaining leg. What the Vurrl do not know is that there is a subset of humans that views physical violence as an art form. The human deftly avoided the claws, wrapped himself around the appendage and wrenched. Especially unarmed combat. They practiced daily, for hours on end, honing their violence the way musicians hone their skills with the Quiga. They believe violence is art? Minnell's voice was barely a whisper. He watched as the human destroyed another joint on the helpless killing machine. He had never seen such brutality. Not just the violence, Kelsor explained. They see the preparation for violence as a path to physical fitness and spiritual growth. They love to compete among themselves, and they especially relish fighting other species. Those classed as apex predators are favorite opponents. The humans consider them the ultimate test of skill. The fur earl was howling, crying. He was incapable of fighting back. The human moved along his broken limbs, 
breaking each remaining joint with methodical precision. Manil slid forward, gripping his stun whip, but Kelsor stopped him. Wait, she said. The human will tell us when it is time. He'll kill him, Manil protested. He won't, she assured him. If he wanted him dead, he'd have done it already. They watched as the human finished breaking every joint on the Furfrel's limbs. Minil wanted to flee to look away, but he did not. Kelsor stood impassively, and he did not want to disappoint his partner. Why are we not briefed on these humans, Minil asked, if they are so dangerous? Kelsor made an undulating motion, the Alukan equivalent of a shrug. They don't usually cause problems. Martial artists enjoy competition, but they rarely pick fights. It is considered bad form. Minil's eyestalk fluttered, signaling confusion. They think it's rude, Kelsor explained. Other martial artists will look down on them for it. When the last toe joint was shattered, the human sat, legs crossed, next to the furrel's head. His tone was matter of fact. You see, humans are soft, weak, prey. This is not correct, the furrel growled. Before it could speak, the human plucked out one of its eyes. He waited for the beast to stop screaming, then calmly ate the eye in front of him. We are predators, apex as you would say. Your people have failed to learn this lesson in war, so now you must learn in other ways. You will bear a message to your people. You will be a message to your people. We are not your prey. If you continue to provoke us, you will become ours. The human raised his gaze to meet Kelsor's eye stalks. He stood. Kelsor stepped forward. Minil moved to back her up, still holding the stun whip. Furl, she said. Identify yourself, please. The Vuriol attempted to speak. He could not do so properly. His jaw had been dislocated. Minil's translator compensated. Shrikth Kthat, third hust of the Red Tooth, I want this human charged with assault. Kelsor turned to the human. Human, identify yourself, please. The human placed his hands together and bent his torso. Minil's translator interpreted the motion as a bow, a sign of respect. Greetings, officers. I am Kazuma Sato of the Tenril Kenji Dojo. Kelsor turned back to the furl. The only assault was committed by you, Shrikth Kadat. We observed you attempting to kill Mr. Sato. He was within his rights to defend himself. You saw and did not stop, Shrikth growled. Kelsor cut him off. He was within his rights to kill you, if he wanted. Kelsor spoke firmly. This is the third murder attempt committed by your species on this station. If there is another, your people will be removed from the herd group. What? Shrikth hissed. You wouldn't dare. The Furfural Starfang Empire has trading rights by treaty. Banning us would be an act of war. It would, Kelsor agreed. You misunderstand me. We will not ban you from trading at the station. We will simply remove you from herd group status. You will no longer be under the protection of our security. Minil's translator interpreted the Furfural's expression as confusion. Kelsor leaned very close and stared Shrikth eye-stalk to eye. We will let the humans hunt you. 